Ephesians chapter 2. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Say amen if you're there. Thank you for being faithful on a Wednesday night. Hallelujah. And you, Corey beat me to it. We need a bigger building just so I can get some of you farther away from me. <laughs> yeah. I love it, though. I, I, in all honesty, I, I joke and kid. I'm, I'm, I love it when people can finish the scriptures. And even when you finish my stories, I got to get new ones. Amen. I love it. And you, everybody say me. me. Hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Yes. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. Let me say this. You ought to be coming more and more like Jesus every day. It's a concept in the Bible. He must increase and I must decrease. So your cop out, well, this is what I've always done. This is how I've always been. That's like saying, Jesus, you're not worthy of my effort. Man, it was Wednesday night. Boy, I just got out of butchering him. Bow. No, I want to see you blessed. Amen. I got to hang around you. I want you more like Jesus too, you know. <laughs> Amen. According to the prince of the power of the air, the word prince means a ruler, commander, chief, a leader. Are you hearing me? Everybody say air. The word air means atmosphere. The ruler of the atmosphere. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Who's working in the children of disobedience? The prince, the commander of the atmosphere. Y'all need, I've already started preaching. You better be with me. And you haven't heard it before because I've been around some of y'all and I've been around me and you got a long way to go. Go get some victory around here. Amen. You hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. It's that conversation with that worldliness in yourself that you struggle with, your lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Not worldly prince and power of the air places oh. heavenly places mm. oh before I go any further let's go ahead and let's set our Bibles down let's lift up our hands and each one as an individual just say God I want to find those heavenly places in my life Jesus I want your presence and your power to move in my life God I ask you right now to move in a mighty way the only way that you can Lord in the minds the hearts and the spirits Lord of everyone in this house Lord permeate this house with your presence we invite you Lord Jesus we exalt you we lift you up God hallelujah God you are welcome in this place we want to be with you tonight and everybody say in Jesus name amen hallelujah give someone a high five and you can be seated hallelujah hallelujah Psalms 22 and 3 I'm going to read that real quick but thou art holy thou art holy O thou that inhabitest 
the praises of Israel to dwell, remain, and sit. That inhabitus literally means he's going to hang out there. I like the, the fact that the word sit is there. I get him images. He can plant his throne right there in the middle of your life and take a seat. To, he's my king of kings and my lord of lords. Why? Because praises is coming out of my mouth. Worship. I'm walking in the place of the heavenlies. At church. I want to speak a little bit on inviting a heavenly atmosphere. Inviting God fully into your life. There's a cultivation process. There's a way, a way to cultivate the atmosphere of heaven. Attracting the heavenly, creating a heavenly atmosphere. Hallelujah. There's something powerful about the use of your hands and your mouth. The Bible says in Psalms 149 and 6, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. We know that the word atmosphere is a mixture of gases that surrounds the planet, the earth. And I'm not going to give you the breakdown, but for tonight, I'm, I'm going to use as an analogy to get your mind working in your own life through your own personal atmosphere. Everybody's got an atmosphere, but then My mother, I love her, God bless her soul, but my mother, if she was upset, she could lock down the whole neighborhood. If my mom was upset, you didn't have to get to the house, you just felt it. We all have an aura, we all have, someone can walk in tonight and if they're excited, hey, there's just something on them. Are you here? Someone walks in and they've been beat down, oh man, what's the matter with you? There's an atmosphere that we have about us. One of the things that kind of struck me about this is we all have, if you own a car, you have one. It's called a combustion engine. It requires, depending on the type of engine that you have, an oxygen and gas mixture to create an optimal atmosphere within each cylinder that is placed under pressure uh, under pressure for the proper combustion to occur, to turn the crank and all that stuff that leads to your wheels. There's a, 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 a air and fuel mixture that is optimum to get that compression, that explosion, that fire. So when you combine all the elements of the compression and the oxygen and the fuel, and then you put some ignition, you get what we call power. Who wants power? Who wants spiritual power? We need to create the right atmosphere around us. If I want the heavenly, I have to be inviting to the heavenly. If, 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 if you are invited over, you invite me over and I walk in and everybody's doing other things and you'll get to me in a minute, I'm going to be more comfortable going to my car and heading home. But if I walk in like they do to so many of your homes and the table's set and the cook, and I can smell the food cooking and you greet me at the door and we come in and sit, it's invite, I want to be there. In our lives, as we, as, we, as we live our lives, you have to, how inviting is my life to the presence of God? If you get up and you go about your day and there's no greeting of the Lord, there's no prayer, there's no intimacy, wake up around 2 o'clock in the afternoon and need God and he's, well, feels unwelcome. You need to understand 
And remember that we're dealing with the prince and the power of the air, the atmosphere. Satan desires his atmosphere to invade wherever we are. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You better believe he wants to invade your home, your job, your marriage, your church. And he does this by invading your attitude, your mind, your heart. He wants to affect your music, your favorite program. He wants his atmosphere loose and free in your life, in your mind, in your heart, coming out of your mouth. Because when you're singing those lyrics or you're making those quotes, it's not inviting heaven. It's an invitation. Are you hearing me? So listen, what, what controls the atmosphere in your home? It's not your faith. It's not your joy. It's not your peace. Evil wants to be loosed in your life. What controls the atmosphere in your home and life are your words. <laughs> your speech controls the atmosphere. Listen, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Matthew Chapter 12, 34 through 37. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, what's in your heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, listen to this, folks. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. It matters what you say. It matters what you're speaking. It matters what you're quoting. Both the natural world and the spiritual world hear and are affected by what you say. Are you hearing me? If the devil invades your heart with an atmosphere of anger or hatred or doubt or fear or depression, it's only a matter of time before the way you speak and it permeates your home. You can leave the house of God after an amazing move of his presence, get in your car, and it's dead before it ever gets out of the parking lot. Are you hearing me? It's only a matter of time before it invades your life, gets in your home, in your room, and whatever you're involved with, as the, as the words come out of your mouth, it controls the atmosphere. How many knows when you first got that job, man, you couldn't wait to get up in the morning. You couldn't wait to get there. You were first, but as you lost the luster of it being new, Pretty soon you start talking different. And if you watch anybody when they first get, just listen to how they're saying. Listen to what they're talking. And if you listen close, if you find out if they're closer to their coming or they're leaving. Your speech controls the atmosphere. What you say can make things better or bitter or worse. Proverbs tells us in chapter 4, verses 20 through 24. My son, attend unto my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Same with words, you're good. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. What you say is important. Mm -hmm. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Lock it down. Be careful what you allow in there. Be careful who you allow in there. Be careful. That keep, that word keep reminds me of living in England and the castles. Every castle had a keep or a place where they locked stuff down. You need to lock it down and only the right things get in here. Careful what you fall in love with. Careful of a culture or items, or think, careful. I'm not going to get into that one tonight, but be careful. For out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth. What's a forward mouth? 
distortion, it's crookedness. Opinion and human rightness doesn't always align with the word of God. And it could be crookedness and distortion. You could have a forward mouth that's against the word of God. Case in point, disciple walking with Jesus, and Jesus is talking about going to the cross, and we all know, oh, no, not so. Bam, forward mouth. You savor us, not the things that be of God. You got to be careful if you spit out your opinion in something you don't like or agree with, you might be literally speaking perverseness against the will of God. That's why, be careful if someone comes up and say, thus saith the Lord. I'll be like this. I look, I look. I know I got a prayer life. Do you? Are you hearing me? You got to be careful for, 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 and perverse lips put far from me. That perverse is perverse. Deviation. Don't even deviate. Be careful. Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life are in the power of the, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Wow. Death and life are in the power of what you say. You could be killing yourself. You would be killing your family, or you could be speaking life and health. Mm. What you speak not only declares what's in your heart, but it declares what's getting praise out of your mouth. We all need to be sensitive because of the atmosphere in our homes. We'll start to shift towards negative conversations. We've heard the old saying, don't take work home with you. Leave it at the door. You come walking in and you've had a bad day and a rough day. The next thing you know, you don't want to go to church. Your church is failing. You're failing. You got no finances. Cars break. And pretty soon, blah, everybody's sick in the house. <laughs> we got to be sensitive because the atmosphere can shift towards our negative conversations. It, it's dangerous to sit around your home and eat saints for lunch or the pastor. You're speaking negative. You're speaking death. We got to pay attention because our speech determines our outcome. The reason, wasn't there, isn't there an amazing presence in here? We started singing and it was beautiful and it was wonderful. The reason why it's so easy to feel heaven in here while you go to hell at home is based on what spoken where. Or what you're focusing on, what you're saying, what you're doing, what you're about. And then you can invert that. You could be all negative at home and walk in here. And then you got someone that's all heaven at home and they walk in here. And they don't understand you. <laughs> it's like we were just a moment ago. King of glory. Say that. Say that with me. King of glory. Glory. I just want to be with you. I tell you right now. Go ahead. I can imagine, Lord, <laughs> there's nobody else on this planet doing it like you right now. All this negative and this fighting and this anger and this hatred and racism and murder and I want to be with you too. And his presence comes into a place like this church and there's an amazing intimate moment with the people of God because the king of glory wants to be with people that have filled their mouth with praise and worship. King of glory. I just want it. It changes and it affects the atmosphere. 
what you get out of this is what you put into it. King of glory, I just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times, many times the difference by how you leave this place today is what you put into it. Kind of taking a pastoral cop out. Kidding, but I am. Many times it's not my preaching or my teaching or anybody else's preaching or teaching. It's your attitude. Because you could walk into a home where you're loved and appreciated and walk in there with a bad attitude and no one wants to be around you either. You can walk into a home where there's nurturing and walk in. Well, this is just, I don't think it is. And the same works in here. Church will love you, care about you, appreciate you, greet you, but you have an attitude and you just get disgruntled about something and you ruin a great Because when we're giving him praise, it's attracting. When we're worshiping, it's drawing his presence. He inhabits, he lives, he sits and dwells and abides in the praises of his people. If this is not happening at home and all you got are devils at home, I'm going to tell you something. You need to get this in your house. Stop blaming this, stop blaming that, and start walking through your house with the praises of God in your mouth. King of glory, I want to be with you. Listen, the devil is looking for access. Whether it's a simple thing of gossip or something negative about the church or about the word of God or, the, or, or anything, the devil's so slick, I don't even want to try to name it all. But I know he's trying to get in. He'll try to get into your music. He'll try to get into a media source. He'll try to get into bitterness and something that happened in your path. All these outside influences of the enemy cause you to think and speak a certain way. And all the devil wants is a way into your house. He's trying to find a portal into your home. He wants you to self-destruct. He wants you to speak in a way that your children self-destructing, your marriage self-destructing. All these things fall apart all because of what he was able to get you to say. Because there's a wonderful peace at church. There's an amazing presence here. And in fact, I'll be honest with you. I can pray at home. I, I like it when I'm there by myself because there's a lot of distractions. But I like to come down here and get, there's just something about the house of God. There's just something about his presence. There's something about, about the church. And I believe it coincides with the word about forsaking not the assembling of yourselves. There's something about the more you hear. Hey, 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 I get it. I get it. That world's full of darkness. But there's worship and there's praise and there's presence and there's power. The house of God. Hallelujah. Like no place else. And it's all because the atmosphere is controlled. It's controlled here. You're going to act right. Or someone's going to let you know. Hey, love you. We don't do that here. See, some people take the preaching as negative. Trust me, the preaching is positive. The teaching is positive. The presence of God is positive. Now, you may come in with a negative attitude and not like it, but you're resisting the will of God. You're resisting the plan of God. Are you hearing me? And you speak negative words, and, uh, and you're, you're influenced by ungodly influences. Because, let me tell you something, the devil loves strife. The devil loves to argue. His very first statement of conversation, hath God said. Some of you struggle with the simplest things that are right in the Bible. Doth not nature itself teach you that you want to fight and you want to argue? You're influenced by the enemy and he's using that doorway 
to destroy and steal your soul. The, the devil likes contention. Be angry with the saints of God. Be angry with the church. Be bitter. You can't even say what it is. There's something wrong. Let me tell you what it is. What you're saying. What you're speaking. What you're thinking. Out of your heart, it's coming. If you have bitterness and woe, you're not going to like anything. <laughs> The Bible says in Psalms, one, uh, Psalms 19 and 14, let the words of my mouth, <laughs> let the words of my mouth, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. One of, the, one of the weirdest things, that, and, and I'm sure there are smarter people on the planet that st study brain waves. How can I wake up after being out of the world for years and haven't heard a song, and the old worldly song gets in my head? I ever wonder if it's the enemy, if I just get you to start saying that. I won't dare say the phrase, but I remember I was hunting one time. You ever get to walking in a cadence? <laughs> I'm a dork, so I do. And I'm just, I'm hunting along, and I'm in a hurry to get to some place. And I, my cadence fell right in line with this song I hadn't heard in years. And I'm going, boom, and I'm saying it over and over in my mind. And I, I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't get rid of it. And I, you know what my answer was? If I never would have heard it, I'd never have to worry about it. And I fought for years to get rid of it. I hope I didn't have a problem. Not tonight by bringing it up. But you know what I'm saying. Are you hearing me? Listen, listen. It's Jude. It's Jude. I'm going to go chapter. Oh, chapter one. There's only one. Uh, verses eight and nine. Listen to this. This We're getting, getting, getting into the spooky angelic stuff here. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet, Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil. He got scrap going on, got an argument going on. He disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation. I ain't arguing with you. <laughs> I'm not arguing with you. I'm not going down to that level. He just said, the Lord rebuke you. You need to understand something. <laughs> if you're going to argue, argue like an angel. <laughs> you see, Michael understood that Satan is known for his mouth. Mouth. And it would be foolish to get in an argument with an angel that's equipped with a mouthpiece that knows how to argue, that knows how to cause division, that knows how to say the subtlest things that seem so innocent. So, so Michael, I'm not going to speak to you. I'm not going to argue my point because that lowers my authority to try to prove my point. So instead, I'm going to speak from a position of victory. I know who I'm submitted to. I can count uh, on his authority when I speak about him. The Lord rebuke you. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so you have to understand. You forfeit your spiritual authority because you speak from a position of the flesh and not the spirit. Are you hearing? So when somebody you know or the devil tries to stir up a family member against you, and you know the natural response, don't, don't say it. Like we read in Ephesians, former conversations. 
the rest of our flesh. The whole last word battle. That's your nature trying to prove a point. You're calling on the wrong father. You're calling on the authority of the wrong father, the devil, the flesh. And you're falling into his trap. Listen, just because you win an argument doesn't mean you change the atmosphere. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm going to say it again. Even if you win the argument, did you change the atmosphere? And that's why that same spirit comes back the next day. And that's why you fight it again the next day. And that's why you deal with it again and again. And pretty soon, it's you. It's you. And you have a household that has strife, contention, and division constantly. Anybody want some help right here? Anybody want a remedy? It's not about being right. The devil knows there's one God and ain't doing him a bit of good. You're hearing me. You can't let that spirit win. Lord, rebuke that. We're not doing that in here. Your spouse is not your enemy. Your children are not your enemy. Your brother and sister in the church are not your enemy. But your enemy is trying to control the atmosphere. He's trying to control the atmosphere in your home, in this church, and in your life. And if he can get you to get in the flesh or, and get carnal, he can. So he don't need an open door if you're going to let him in the back door or to a window. Don't let him. Bible lets us know that a soft or a gentle answer turneth away wrath. First Peter chapter 3 tells us not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called. Asked everybody on Sunday who's called, and everybody said yes. So guess what? You're called to this. That you should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil right. and his lips that they speak no guile your opinion doesn't matter if it's being right doesn't matter king of glory fill this place I just want to be with you unless I'm arguing with my wife Unless I'm fighting with my brother. See how easy it is to kick God out? See how easy it is to disrupt the move of God in your life because you get sideways about something and it's more important that you be right or that you put someone in their place or you cause a problem than it is. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. can hammer your spouse and hammer your children and hammer your brother and hammer your sister and hammer the church and hammer that because you don't lie. And you're bagging on your natural American right. You're a meristolic instead of apostolic. Let him eschew you. Why would you not rather suffer the wrong? That's what it says. Eschew evil and do good. And let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the... Does that say right or righteous? Righteous. And his ears are open unto their... 
prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge. All right. But the mouth of the fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue, that's literally a healing, is a tree of life, but perverseness. Therein is a breach in the spirit. There's a door for the enemy. Don't let the enemy get advantage over you or those around you through you. Don't give them access. Don't breach and cause an access way for the enemy to get an advantage on your home, on your church, on your spouse, on your children, on your brother, on your, when you, what you speak, you attract. What you speak influences the outcome. I, remember, I always go to this story. Remembers the, the guy who the king leaned. He leaned on him for advice. He leaned on him for influence in 2 Kings 7. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. And they'd been under siege and then they were, it was bad. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold! <laughs> If the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? I can just hear the crickety old guy. Can you imagine you just get through preaching your guts out and some idiot goes out in the car and completely destroys it and you wonder why you got to counsel the family? Or you wonder why they, they're just not where they... You don't know how, how God deals with us and works with us and he puts all this effort into a church service and all this time into music and, and a church and all, because it's his will. You walk out, open the door for the devil to come in. And it's not that you're not called to be spiritual, you're not called to that. You squish it every time it might be there. And he, and he said, Behold, thou shalt see with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. How many of us are starving in the spirit? Because we can't control our mouths. We think we've got God sewed up in our little life. And we're, well, God never did that. He's not going to do that now. He spoke negatively. He received a negative outcome. <laughs> You may be what you eat, but you'll get what you speak. How about Ezekiel when he was told to speak to those dead dry bones? For the sake of this message, I'm going to say this. But not, is he out of his mind? They're dead. We can see they're dead. How many of us speak from that point of view instead of the fact that maybe the Lord Oh, Lord Jesus, help us tonight. And so when he saw it, the Bible says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Be careful when you want to bag on the man of God or bag on what he's preaching. He may be preaching to your old dry bones uh, to bring things back that have been dead and dry and you're canceling out the, the noise and the shaking of the bones and life coming back together. You got to allow the influence of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God to speak life in your home and in your life, in your ministry, in your relationship, in your marriage. Let God speak. Who will you allow to influence your speech? 
How many of us would walk away at that point? But instead he spoke. What you speak will directly affect the atmosphere. You know what happens to people? You know why they commit suicide? They're only talking to themselves. And they've allowed a portal of the enemy. Oh, a little resistance here. I don't care if you don't like it. It's true. We were meant to live. In fact, we're meant to live a whole lot longer than what we do. But every time man puts his hands to God's plan, we shorten what God can do because we're speaking negative. We're speaking ugliness. You ought to turn around to tell the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, thou savorest not the things that be. I'm going to speak life into my life. I'm going to speak hope. I'm going to speak peace. I'm going to speak joy. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. Oh, hallelujah. What you're listening to, what you're watching has an influence behind everything. It's not innocent music. It's not an innocent show or movie. It influences your thoughts. It influences your words. If you'll defend it over the things of God, you got an idol. You're willing to part ways? Over that, pastor preaching against movies, pastor preaching. Someone's lost their song. King of glory, fill this. I just want to be. Hallelujah, it affects your beliefs, it affects your faith, what you speak matters. If you're talking with the enemy every day and you're listening to carnality every day, oh, I'm attacked again, we're under attack again. If you, guess what's going to show up every day? Just go open the door, come on in and give them a chair. Mouth is the doorway or the portal to the atmosphere. Oh, I can't get over this depression. I can't get over this. It keeps attacking me. Oh, I want to give up. Oh, I can't, can't get over whatever it is you can't get over. You're actually opening the gateway or the doorway to allow it to show up. The spirit world knows our conversations. It can affect everything about you. It'll affect your home. It affects the church. You sit around here grumpy about something. We all know it. You may think, oh, I ain't tell nobody. My mom never said a word, but she could set our whole house on edge. Let's get honest in the Holy Ghost. The spirit world knows about your conversations, and it'll affect everything. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. Listen. Turn there in your notebook. Take my word for it. For our conversation is in heaven. Lord be doing a little leaves dropping. <laughs> From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue <clears throat> all things unto himself. To simplify that, do you realize he has the power over everything that's been upsetting your house? He's got the power over everything that's been hindering you. Let me say it this way. He has power over everything you're letting in. If you'll obey his word and shut the door, it'll stop. It stops. Amen. Heaven and hell are interested in your words, interested in what you're saying. Listen to Daniel chapter 10. And behold, a hand touched me. 
which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. You want to talk about a penitent state. He got the, this is, the, the, I'm going to say this because some of you need to hear this. But when's the last time you get on your face and your hands and your knees in the church? Will you let him touch you? And he said unto me, oh, Daniel, listen, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then he said unto me, fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. If that don't set you on fire, if that don't do something, now, let, let, me, let me just let me put some, some spiritual, that woo, spooky stuff on it. Listen to this. Verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, we all know who that is, old Slewfoot himself, withstood me one in 20 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. There's an all-out war going in the spirit here. There's a battle that's going back. You can't grab it. It's intangible. You can't understand. Both heaven and hell were only interested in his word. The angels were trying to get the words to heaven and the enemy was trying to keep the words from getting out of Daniel's mouth. There was literally a war in the spirit over the speech and the words of Daniel. The war was not of the world. There was war over the words of a child of God. I know you're not shouting. You're not even worshiping. But do you realize that you're being listened to? That's right. Amen. They're listening Amen. to every one of us. That's right. They're listening to what you say. They're listening when you and I open our mouth. They're listening right now. They're listening to what you sing. They're listening to what you say. They're listening to every... Mm, Every idle word, they hear all of it. Both heaven and hell are listening because heaven waits for worship and praise and life and joy and peace and the words that glorify God. Heaven is on its heads waiting, but hell is waiting for you to speak death and negative and destruction and fear and negativity. Atmosphere is only peaceful and powerful if you're attracting heaven. The atmosphere is only painful and pathetic if you're only attracting hell. The atmosphere only gets ugly if you're constantly attracting hell. Listen. I'm going to set some of you on edge. Are you ready? Listen, listen, listen. Doesn't matter how bad the atmosphere is in your life. Some of you might be in a horrible place right now. Some of you listen online might be in a mess with your health, with your home, with everything might just be a mess. But it doesn't matter how bad the atmosphere is. Your words, your speech, your voice is so powerful. You can be living in a horrible situation right in the middle of a firestorm. You, you, you get your words, you get your mouth, you get your voice to start saying the right things. <laughs> you, you start speaking the right stuff. I got about three of you. If you don't believe just ask Paul and Silas. Their hands were bound. Their feet were bound. Their back and legs had been beat to a pulp. Their bodies thrown in a prison cell. They cloaked and surrounded in bitter 
darkness in the company of prisoners. What was the difference? The devil neglected to bind their mouth and their mouth was loosed and what they spoke and what they said was more powerful than everything that had them bound. I don't care what's got you bound. I don't care what's got you torn apart. If you'll speak the right thing, if I inhabit the pray, King of glory, fill this place. Oh God. <laughs> they used their words, they used their speech, they used their mouth. To change the atmosphere. I'm telling you right now. Let's all stand. Come to the music. I'm going to wrap this up. Listen. Jesus can fix your situation. Jesus can change the whole situation. Oh. <laughs> He could turn your home around. He could turn your life around. He could turn your marriage around. He could turn your finances around. He could turn any situation around. He could turn your children around. See, 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 listen. See, I, I've been around this long enough. Years ago, I got sideways. I was just trying to do my best, but it was not good enough for some people around me. Every time I turned around to do this or to do that, someone would have something negative to say. I remember on my way to church that, that night years ago, and everybody, you're going to go through this test. If you're going to ever be anything for God, you're going to have to make a decision. And as I was, I made up my mind, this is my last time, my last service. Young, new convert, one of them moments. I'm glad it was just a moment. Some of y'all make it a lifetime. That's it. I upset as I walked in and kind of had you know you got an attitude can't embellish the story like I didn't know I do now I saw fault with everything hurry and get this over I gotta go you know the Lord didn't care about me at all he had a guy up there wasn't even a pre he wasn't even good at talking <laughs> hey, that may happen on some of these. Well, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, but I'm saying this. That may bother some of you on these Sunday nights because this, you know, we're going to let some people get up and spread their wings a little bit. But maybe it might be you sitting in that service with an ugly attitude like old Brother Crow had. I wasn't even Brother Crow then, I was just Steve. I was so new. Probably still on my first haircut, brother. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah. No, nah, that's nah, I was a little longer than that because I was driving my yeah, it don't matter. <laughs> and this joker gets up there and talks about heaven and hell. It was dead. I mean no but kids crying. You could hear everything. It was dead. And he made that altar call plea. And when he said, there's someone here tonight, I'm like, you dirty rag. <laughs> You're, and he, he called, he called, he just should have said my name. It would have been, we could have finished the church sooner. I look around, I made my way to an altar. And I fell on my face. Stop talking negative. Start praising God. Next thing I know, I prayed through. Changed my mind. Got up, and when I looked around, 
the whole altar was full. You think it's you that wants you to sit there and not worship. You think it's you. You think it's just you that doesn't like this song or don't like the enemy's trying to make you nitpick on a bunch of things that don't mean nothing compared to the things you are allowing in your own life. Trust me, the devil will make a fool out of you. You'll stand and do things for hours, but the church, the devil doesn't want you to worship. The devil doesn't want you to praise. He wants you to sit there. Because if you opened your mouth, you would change the atmosphere if you would open your mouth. Some of you need to get back to that place of stirring up the gift that's in you. Get back in the Holy Ghost and the presence of God. There's a danger. You need to look around. You need to make sure. You better make sure. I better make sure. How's she doing, brother? How's he doing, sister? You think you're just talking bad about the church and they're ready to quit. We can't pass a service without standing and making, making a declaration. The devil's not getting my thoughts, not getting my mind. Jesus, getting all of it. Every altar call is that moment of declaration that I'm going to worship and I'm going to I'm going to create an atmosphere. Devil, you don't belong up in here. My words are going to be spirit. You need to start praying and prophesying and praising God. I'm going to close with this. We all got situations bound up, locked down in our heart and our mind. Sometimes it's been there for years. Bound fast and seemingly unbreakable. I'm going to give you one last verse. The Bible says in Luke 15 and 10. See, y'all think this is just for new people. I'll tell you, you know, the most powerful thing, I, I love to see people been around for a while. Brother Bruce, when you took a lap the other day, that's an elder. I was jealous. And I haven't told you this, but when you took, the, the Spirit of the Lord must have moved right there. Because the moment it moved right there, he planted a thought in my heart. And I went, oh, and you were gone. So I know God was there was an atmosphere here. I don't know why y'all missed it, but they were just kidding. There was an atmosphere here. Caused him to run. Oh, my God. There's something that happens. You're influencing those around you. Some of you are miracles. You can't, you're the only one doing it. Keep doing it. The Bible says, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. That's not even my focus. One, let, let me just, let me paint it dark to be evangelistic. One, don't know jack all about worship, living for God, nothing comes down and repents. Name the worst sin, your sin, anybody's sin, he's over here or she's over here, repenting. What happened? What they were living for, they were no longer living for. What matters to them didn't, all of a sudden they're repenting. To a God. And the moment their speech changed, yes. Yes. heaven's listening. When heaven heard it, what does it say? What is, what is happening in heaven? There is joy in the presence of the angels of God. Heaven's full of joy. Heaven's full of joy and hell is silent. 
baby, we ought to start silencing hell for a little while. I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to praise God right now. I'm going to use my mouth to glorify God.